This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Navid and welcome back to the Green Automation Labs. So today uh, on public demand, that this topic, although I have already covered with my data driven framework approach, but again, I'm covering with the latest Apache POI ABI that recently I have created. And those libraries are available on my GitHub repositories. I'll share with you all. And, uh, but today I'll give you the demo that <clears throat> how can you read the data from Excel files? So what we have to do, so let's see, this is Excel file, right? Having some columns over here, username, password, and let's see, Naveen is written over here. And this is my username. Uh, two rows I have created. The first row is always considered as the column. So let's see, these are my columns. So I'll make some, you know, put some, something like this, color, colors and all. And then <clears throat> two rows are there. So I want to read this particular data and uh, from the Excel file, and then I want to use the same data in Selenium. So something like this, we will do it, okay? So let's start. So what I have done that uh, this Excel utility is already written by me. You can see that Excel is reader.java. This is the author, Mr. Naveen Purita. And you can see that, okay, all these different methods I have created. So earlier it was uh, having some problems. So I have fixed all these issues. All these issues now have been fixed now. And now I'm handling if any kind of data, either it is string data or it is numeric data, or if it is the formula based data is there. So I'll show you these three uh, examples in your Excel file. If you maintain any string data, numeric and formula based data, you can pick it data from there. And uh, yeah, so different methods are there. You can read the data, you can write the data, you can create a new sheet, you can create a new column over there. And I'll and tell you what are different important methods. So you simple write uh, command O or control O if you're using Mac. So this is the constructor. Okay, Excel as reader is the constructor where you have to give the path. And then I'll tell you that these are the methods. Total number of counts, get cell data, two, uh, you know, methods are there, over, overloaded methods are there. You can pass the string as a, a column value or integer number also. You can pass set cell data is to write the data, which will return a Boolean that data got passed or not. And add sheet also you can do that remove sheet you can do that add a new column in the existing sheet you can do that remove column you can do that and then you can do that is sheet exist or not the sheet is available or not and then get column count and get cell row number is also there so this is i mean this is this utility is really really great guys you can use this utility for any kind of framework where you're using the data maintaining your data in your excel file either it is API or Selenium or any kind of okay framework you are using with Java. So it's not only with Selenium because I'm not using any Selenium code in this particular Apache Poi API and it's totally based out of Apache Poi API. You can see all my imports are coming from uh, Poi API. So you can see that all these are Poi APIs, right? And uh, quickly, I'll tell you that in this particular project, what I have done that this is the Pomblet XML file. And in this pomblet XML file, what I have added, these dependencies, the latest dependencies I have added, you can see, I'll just come down. You can see that uh, for Apache Poi API, I'm using, this is the latest dependency 4.1.1. Okay, so earlier uh, we were using 3.9 and uh, when we upgraded to 4.1.1, most of the formulas and most of the methods uh, most of the classes got deprecated. So I have to, I had to update the code that I've recently updated and uploaded in my Git repository. And this code is with the latest POI API. So you can, you have to use this particular code, right? Some other dependencies like OOXML, where some other <coughs> cell data is information available over there. Commons IO, you have to use it. Uh, OOXML schema 4.1, 4.1, POI scratch pad, POI OOXML schema again. Okay, yeah, this is a duplicate one, so I don't need this. Let me delete this. This is a duplicate one I have added. Other than that, open XML 4J, okay, that you have to add. These are the supported, uh, supporting dependencies are available over here, right? So you have two choices. So I'll tell you both the choices. First, you do one thing that you take this particular Excel as reader.java and copy paste somewhere in your, uh, you know, anywhere in your, you create a package in your project and then paste it over here. 
and you will get this particular XLS reader or Java from your from my Git repository. The link I'll share in the in the description. You can get the link from there, and you can uh, download and then you can copy paste the entire content and paste it over here. And then you have to add the format XML file. You have to add all these dependencies over here. So this is the first choice, right? Now, how to write the code? So let's see. This XLS reader dot Java is already available. I'll create another package over here. Let's see. I want to write some test. So I simply open Excel Util Test dot Java, or you can create any test class. And then what you need to do that? Uh, okay, I'll tell you. Let me delete all these guys. What you need to do that? Uh, this is the Excel file is already there. You can see that this is the Excel file. This Excel file I'll keep it over here in my in my same project. It's available over here. You can see sample excel dot xls so you have to save the file with xls x not xls okay it will support only xls x only so after that what you need to do you just need to create the constructor of this particular class i mean you need to call the constructor of this class so you have to create the object so let's create the object let's see object name is reader is equal to new xls reader and this constructor is expecting one path where exactly your path is available so my path is available means your excel file path so right click on it go to properties and then i copy this particular src path from here or you can give the absolute path also so let's see this is my i'll write it something like this this is my path and uh, okay just to make sure that it's working fine i just run this particular code so it's not giving you any error it's not giving you any output also because we are not printing anything now what we need to do with this reader <clears throat> so with this xls reader it will make the connection over here with the file input stream class and all those things it will get the uh, reference of workbook and worksheet and and that's it okay so once we get the reference and later on uh, this workbook and worksheet i have already declared at the class level over here you can see that workbook and worksheet and then these two variables i have to use okay in other methods that's it so once you need to do that the moment you write reader dot then you will have all the methods which are available in xls reader dot java so you can see that see let's see get cell data let's see this is the first method get cell data so which cell data you want so let's see what is the sheet name so let's see sheet name is this this is a sheet name you can see that i have created a sheet over here so this is a sheet name and let's see my sheet name is this login or i'll do one Something else that I create a variable that string uh, sheet name is equal to login. Okay, and then I'll pass the sheet name over here. This is my sheet name. What is the column number and row number? So let's see, column number is zero. Okay, this is a column number as zero. I'll pass zero, and then the row number is row number is two. So what exactly the value is available? Zeroth column and the second row. Okay, so column will be represented with index 0, 1, 2, 3, like this. So this is 0, this is 1, like this. And the row will start from 1. So let's see at 0 and 2, what exactly the value is available. So get cell data will give you a string over here. So you can see that uh, string, uh, let's see, this is the data is equal to this. And then I'll print it on the console that system dot print and the data. And uh, let's see. So here you will get it. You are getting Naveen, and you can see that Naveen is available over here. Simple, right? So like this, you can easily do that. Now, if you really want to know that reader dot get row count, how many rows are there in this particular sheet? My sheet name is the login sheet. So get row count will give you what integer. So I'll store an integer variable. Let's see integer row count is equal to this and then i'll print it on the console that system dot out print and then i simply say total rows plus row count. okay then let's see so total number of rows are three you can see that three rows are there including column okay total number of rows three rows are there including column perfect so this is another method then we will see reader dot <clears throat> let's see what more method is there add a new column in which sheet in this particular login sheet i want to add a new column the column name is let's see status 
Okay. So whenever you have to add a column, it means you are performing, you are writing something, you are doing some write operation. So what you need to do is whenever you are performing any write operation, you have to close the Excel file and then you have to execute. So let me close it, save it, and then you have to run your program. So let's run it and let's see. Okay, so program is done and add column will give you a Boolean if it is true or false. So let's see the column got added or not. So I'll open my Excel file once again. Okay, now you can see that the status column got added over here. So it will not give any color coding and all those things like right? color and all those things you have to do. Color is not important for me, right? But it will add a new column over here like this, right? Okay, now this is the add column. So let me comment it. I don't want to add a new column once again. Now let's see some more method. Reader dot add sheet method is there. Again, you can add a new sheet over here. A new sheet will be added over here. You can see that this particular sheet is already written over here. So let me delete this particular sheet. Okay, the sheet. Okay, and I'll add one more sheet over here. And the sheet name is <clears throat> let's see uh, registration. Simple registration, right? And then you run it. Make sure that Excel file should be closed because again, you are adding the data over here, adding a new sheet over there. It means you are performing any write operation. So let's open it again and then let's see once again. So yeah, you can see that registration got added, right? Perfect. Now, one more method is there that uh, you can simply write if uh, let's see first one method reader dot is sheet exist the sheet is available or not the sheet the registration sheet or let's see the login sheet name okay this sheet is available or not so each sheet exist will give you boolean so I'll, i can write something like this that if the sheet is available something like this you can do that okay so if sheet is available it means or let's see if add sheet is registration sheet is already available you don't need to add this particular sheet once again so i'll write in double quotes right so what i'll do i'll write this particular code over here like this and then what i'll do if sheet is already available registration sheet is already available then you don't need to come inside the if condition so what i'll do let's see right now the sheet is already available right the sheet is already available so what i'll do i simply make it this guy is sheet exists will return true and make it false by providing a not over here it means this entire condition will be false now so obviously it will not come inside the if condition then <clears throat> it will not perform any add sheet operation right so let's run it again and let's see so program is done and then i'll quickly check and open my excel file see it's not adding a new sheet now what i'll do i'll delete this registration sheet save it close it and now what will happen you go to your if condition sheet is available no it's not there so it will return false and this not will make it true then the if condition will be satisfied and then it will add the registration sheet over there so now you run it again perfect and then i'll check it again the sheet is added or not you can see that registration sheet got added once again Right, so this is kind of a smart program. We can easily write it like this. Simple if condition I have written. No need to write else condition. Right, so this is a rather method. Now, how will you perform the write operation? How exactly you will write a data in a particular cell? So let's see, I'm writing reader dot set cell data method is there. What is your sheet name? Let's see, my sheet name is login. What is your column name? My column name is, I'll do one thing. This is my column name. My column name is username. Okay. So column name is username. What is the row number? In which row you want to add? Let's say I want to add in second row. And what is the data that you want to add? Okay. Or let's see, I'll do one thing. Sorry. Then the row number we have to add. So one second, just a second. One second, let me write back it. So sheet name is this column name. I want to add a column name as a status. In the status, I want to pass something over here. So I'll write my column name as a status. 
row number is uh, two in the second row and the data i want to pass let's see pass like this right in double quotes and then again we are performing a write operation <clears throat> so we have to close it and save it and let's see if it's working or not for example run it again yeah so write operation should be done and uh, okay let me open my excel file once again okay you can see that pass got entered over here right simple okay now so this is about the set cell data for write operation get cell data for read operation like this get row count will give you total number of rows available over there right <clears throat> let's see do we have any other thing reader dot add column we have seen that add sheet we have seen that get cell data we have seen that and uh, get cell data there are two methods one is you can pass the integer column and you can pass the column name also so let's say you want to get sheet name is login column name is see earlier we were passing column name caller number zero but let's see i want to get that uh, username and from the row means from the third row what is the values available from the third row and i'll directly print it on the console that system dot argument talent and then you run it again see it's giving you tom right then you can actually see that tom is available over here third row username one right this is what we have done that uh, third row username column from the login sheet sheet name is login so this is also the thing is available i'll do one thing i will keep it this over here so that you will remember so get cell data method is overloaded <clears throat> you can pass the column name directly or you can pass the column number also the first column will start with zero remember and the row will start from one right okay do we have any other thing reader dot so get column count is also there the total number of columns okay in which sheet in login sheet so i'll directly print it on the console system dot out of print Darren, that total number of columns are there so let's see how many columns are there so total number of columns it should give you three so three columns are there username password and the status column three okay and then i think one more method i have written reader dot uh, remove the column you can remove the column also from which sheet from uh, i'll do one thing let's say this is my registration sheet and i'll add a column over there the test column okay this is my test column and i want to remove this particular column so this is a column and i want to remove this column so how will you remove first of all you have to tell the registration is the sheet name so from the registration sheet right and the column name number is zeroth column you remove it okay so we are going to again performing something over here so we'll just close it and run it again okay so once the program is done we will open our excel file the program is still running you can see that it's still not terminated and once it is done <clears throat> okay it is done now and then we will see we will open our excel file once again and we will go to registration and the column is gone right so it's a very flexible utility guys very easy to use all these methods are quite easy and uh, i have written these methods in such a way that you will easily understand with the method name itself what you have to do that now other than that let's see sometimes what you have to do i'll go to my login right and now see it carefully from the login or let's say i'll go to my registration i'll create one column phone number and age column there are two columns are there for the registration you have to provide your phone number so whenever you're writing the phone number over here like this and 10 digit number let's see nine eight seven six five seven something like this okay how many digits three three plus three six plus ten right six plus four ten so what you have to do you don't need to add it like this okay i'll tell you what is the problem so let's see i want to fetch the data okay 
uh, let me comment this, otherwise it will remove this particular column. So I'll write system dot out bin then reader dot get cell data, okay? From which sheet the sheet name is the registration sheet. From the registration sheet, what is the column name? The column name is the phone number, and the row number is second row. Let's see what exactly the value is available, right? Okay, and then I'll give some age also. Let's see, age is 25, right? And I'll do one thing that I'll print the same thing registration from the age column. And let's see what exactly it's printing. So it's saying, <clears throat> okay, it's saying just a second. See, phone number, it's something like this, it's saying. Or the phone number is this, right guys? This is a phone number and uh, we are getting the output is something like this that this is a numeric and this and the numeric so we are getting the value is like this 9.8765 something like this right can you see that although my number is this not point and all so what you have to do whenever you have to write a data over here you just need to simply write like this okay one colon over here you have to write single quote you have to write like this okay same thing for this guy also like this okay and then you try to run it and now for 25 we are getting 25.0 that's a decimal number we are getting now you run it again okay now you will get the perfect value both are like this 25 and this no point values we are getting okay why we are getting this particular string because uh, i have written a system dot order print talent over here so i'll do one thing that i'll go to my get cell data method and somewhere i'm printing just because of i was doing some debugging yeah so this i have to comment it out okay now you run it again you will see the data <coughs> perfect data like this always remember whenever you are writing any numeric value in your excel file please write it with this with a single quote so don't worry single quote will not be considered so whenever we write anything in excel file as any numeric value in excel file it should start with single quote and the value like this it's a good practice to do that okay this is the way you should do that otherwise you will be getting 25.0 or 9.87 or something like this point values you will be getting this is the first thing Second thing is that let's say I want to get the age value, but age is written in some formula because in Excel file, some formula also we can write it. Let's say the formula is sum. Sum is a formula. You can write some formula like this equal to sum. And uh, let's say I want to write 10 plus 30. I'll write 10 plus 30 bracket enter. So the sum of 10 plus 30 is 40. So value is 40, but this 40 is coming from this particular sum function right it's a formula actually in excel file we call formula not the function so some formula is there so how exactly can i can we read the data from formula yes we can do the we can read the data from formula as well okay so that condition also i have added so now let's see we should get 40 now okay i haven't saved it actually just a minute. let me save it and run it again I should get 40. Yeah, you can see that 40 and getting. Okay, but for here, we really don't have any control. Why? Because deliberately, what I have done, I have written a formula over here. Right, guys. Formula over here. So here you will be getting 40.0. And then later on, you can remove the point zero later on if you really want to do that with some string manipulation or something like this, some regular expression, you can use it. And you can remove the point zero but you will be getting 40 the some uh, formula based values also you will be getting it right or if it's a normal string you can get the normal string as well Naveen and Tom but we have already seen that right guys so numeric values any kind of values true false any kind of values is this available you will be getting it for sure I have handled all the conditions over here the string numeric and the formula in fact, uh, 
I have added this uh, date format also. Date, date format is available. You will be getting a date format as well. Okay. So uh, otherwise, if any true or false is written, you will be getting a Boolean value also. So this condition also I have added over here. So although I haven't tested, so let's see, let me test, is it working or not? So I'll write, let's see something true. This is a Boolean value. And uh, let's see, are we getting true or not? Otherwise I have to fix this later on. Okay, so for true, it's not printing anything. It could not be recognized. So let me do one thing. It's getting true only like this. Okay, let me run it again. Yeah, now we are getting true, right? So what we have to do, we have to write with this, with single quote, then it will pick, okay? So if you are getting any blank value or something, please write a data properly over here in your Excel file. The code is absolutely fine. Okay, so this is the thing guys. Now, if you really want to use the same thing in your uh, Selenium, quickly I'll take one basic example of Selenium. What I'll do that, uh, <clears throat> I'll create, first of all, I have to add a dependency for Selenium. So I'll add a dependency for Selenium. From some previous project, I'll take the dependencies. So I'll do one thing. Let's see from my previous projects. Uh, just a second. Okay, one second. I just need to get the. Uh, go to format XML file or some other project. I just need to copy paste the dependency for uh selenium as well as web driver manager also i'll take it so that we can launch so 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 scroll down yeah so these are the two dependencies i'll be using so selenium 3 and a web driver manager dependency i'll be using i'll just go to my okay form over here and uh, i'll just paste it over here Right, and then what I'll do that I'll create another file. I'll go to my project. This is my project, and I'll create one class over here. Let's see the login page. Okay, select the main method and click on finish. Or if you're trying to write any testing also, that you can write it. Or let's see, I'm writing directly inside the main method. And I'll do one thing, I'll simply launch Google Chrome. So web driver manager dot chrome driver dot setup so that no need to configure your uh, chrome driver dot exe and all those things. This web driver manager will automatically will take it. Now I simply write a web driver a driver is equal to new chrome driver. Okay, and import these two things. And then I launch some URL where we can pass the username and password. So I have something with me. Let me go to app.hubspot.com. Okay. And uh, so this is a username password. So I'll be passing some wrong username, wrong password with multiple data. So inspect this guy. So quickly you can see that ID is equal to username. So I'll be using ID. So first of all, this is the URL. Okay, I'll try the URL once again, sorry. Yeah, this is the URL. Okay, and then I'll write some implicitly weight driver dot manage dot timeout dot implicitly wait of uh, let's see 15 seconds time unit dot second okay fine now before that i'll do one thing i'll open my excel file and here this is my login data and i'll write some proper data over here so let me delete this status column i don't need this and the username i'm writing simply let's see naveen 
one and the password is test one two three and then i'm writing tom one password is test 1990 then peter one and password is pass one two three and then steve and then i'm writing steve three four five and then i'm writing something <clears throat> okay can and then i'm simply write can one two three three okay so these are the three plus two five username five passwords i have in this particular excel sheet with these two columns so one time browser may be launched and implicitly wait is also there i have applied now see it carefully what i'm going to do that uh, i'll start first of all xls reader class object i have to create right so this guy i'll take it these two sheet name okay create the constructor of excel reader class and reader dot get row count i'll be taking it and what is the sheet name sheet name is this so total number of rows i'll store over here so let's see this is my row count right guys so i'll be getting total number of rows are 1 to 6 6 rows are there fine okay and then now what i'll do one by one we have to pick the data from username let's see my first data is navin test 1 2 3 then tom then peter then steve and then kelly and then we have to keep entering the data in on my login page so obviously one by one we have to pick so you can see that we have to start a for loop over here and we will start the loop from here from the second row because the actual data is available from the second row so i'll start one for loop over here let's see my for loop is row number and write row number is equal to 2 not 1 because one is a column the first row is a column guys so we have to start from here right row number less than equal to what less than equal to row count because row count is 6 so we have to consider 6 also so that's why we have to write less than equal to row count is 6 right and then your row number keep increasing the value right and then what i'll do i simply write reader dot get cell data what is the sheet name sheet name is login what is the column name my column name is the username this is the column name what is the row number the row number is equal to 2 so i'll write like this so i don't want to do any hard coded values over here so row number is 2 row number equal to 2 first time and then i'll store in a string that is my username or let's see email or let's see uh, login id whatever the string you write it this is my login id same thing i'll do it for the password is equal to and the second column is the password okay like this and then what i'll do let me print it on the console let system dot out print and i simply write a login id plus with some space plus password okay then it will print and then i'll create one extra uh, line over here right so let me comment these two guys so first let's see this code is working or not am i able to capture the data from excel file or not so let's run it and here you can see that the same data navi this tom this peter steve and ken okay you don't need a new line over here so let's run it again so you can see the data over here right the exact data i'm getting it so once i get the data i just need to fill in my driver on my web page so this is a driver dot manage and all those things i'll be using and then i'll do one thing i'll create two web elements over here one web element is user id the first login id or email id or whatever let's see i'll be writing user id username is equal to driver dot find element by dot id and the id is username okay you can see the id over here the id is the username and for the password 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 is id password okay so the same thing i'll be doing it over here for the password field 
ID is password. So I have created these two revenues. Import this. And this is my, let's see the password, PW, right? Now, what I'll do, I simple write a username, the dot send keys. What you want to send? I want to send login ID, that whatever we are getting it. And then pwd dot send keys. What's the value you want to enter? Password value that I'm getting from Excel file password. That's it. Right now you run it and let's see if it's working or not. So yeah, it is launching the browser and uh, entering the URL. And now you can see that it's entering all the values, but the problem is it's entering in the same row. Like all the values are coming, getting appended over here. So this is not the right way. So what I'll do that first entering the, before entering the value, I'll clear the field first. So clear it. Right, and then same thing for password also. Dot clear. So first you clear and then enter the value. So let's run it again. <clears throat> so the browser is launched, URL is also launched. And let's see. Now see, oh, still it's entering. So the same thing. Okay, we'll do one thing. Should clear, maybe it's not clearing. Mm -hmm. I will do one thing. Let's run it again. Let me check it again. It should clear the field first. Otherwise, we will take some other login. Okay, it's not clearing actually. It's trying to clear, but it's not getting clear. So maybe we can use some other website. Okay, I don't want to waste my time that why it is not getting cleared. So we will do one thing that uh, we will use, let's see classic CRM. The classic CRM .com is only the login page that we will take it. And uh, here we have the username password. So I'll do one thing, inspect this guy. And this guy is having, instead of ID, it's having name. So username and the password. So simple username, password instead of name. Name, name. Okay, and uh, I'll be using the URL, different URL. Right, and now let's run it, let's see. Okay, now you can see that one by one, all the values got entered and the last value is scale. Perfect. Right, so this is how we can do the data driven approach. We can use the Excel file data and then you can fill login form, registration form or whatever the kind of form you want to use it, you can simply use it. Right guys, so the first thing is what we have to do. You will get this particular Excel as reader.java from my Git repository. And the Git repository, I'll show you where exactly it is. You go to my github.com. I'll show you this URL I'll share with you. And this is a new Excel utility is available. And then you go to SRC. Under SRC, this uh, library is already available. You can see that Excel is reader.java. Okay, you can download this Excel reader.java or you just copy paste this entire Excel. Excel is reader and then copy paste over here in your framework in your project and then simple start using it and make sure all these dependencies you have to add. So all these dependencies are available at the project level. You go to the form.xml file and uh, all these dependencies are available. Right? This is the first approach. Second approach, what you can do that if you don't want to use all these Apache Poi API or don't want to use copy paste as Excel as reader or Java, what you can do is you can create a separate project so let's see, I have created this particular project, fake data. Okay, whatever the name of the project, it's a separate project I have created. And then I have given one jar file over here. 
you can download this particular jar file you can see that excel util jar with dependencies dot jar you click on it and then you can download it you can see simple download button is there you download this jar file from here okay it will be very simple for you guys simple you can see that it's only around 20 mb so you download on your local save it somewhere in your desktop or documents or anywhere and then you just keep it so yeah it is available in my downloads folder you can see that i'll show you that's available over here in under my downloads folder it got downloaded over here what you need to do you right click on your project go to properties click on java build path and add this particular dependency over here so let me remove and add, add once again you click on add external jars go to downloads and this is the utility as a jar you have to add in this particular jar all these apache poi api you will be getting xls reader.java also you will be getting just click on apply and click on okay that's it and you just need to start writing your code you don't need to add any poi api dependencies or any kind of xls reader you have to use it see i'm not using xls reader i'm directly start using it i'm directly start using xls reader which is coming from this particular package over here and this package is coming from where that jar file that we have added over here this is just like normal java jar and then you simply run it you will start getting all the data over here you can see that okay there's 900 tom1 okay everything you will be getting over here right guys so this is very simple very super simple i mean right super simple and you just need to add the jar file and start using it right or if you really want to use xls reader in your okay in your project in that case you have to just copy paste this xls reader.java that i have okay that this particular java file i have already created like this okay but in that case you have to maintain all the dependencies in your render so better to use jar file directly okay so that's what i really wanted to cover because a lot of people were struggling with uh, poi api 3.9 now you guys are using 4.1.1 so now this code is up to date with 4.121 make sure you are following the right things in your excel file starting with all the numeric data and the boolean data you have to start with okay single code over there like this and then it will perfectly super fast perfectly it will be it will be working like a charm okay so thanks for watching this particular video guys and uh, yeah i'll see you and if you have any queries please write your queries in the comment section and uh, I'll see you in the next video.